right, good morning, everybody. There's still a bunch of people in the back cleaning up from the breakfast, so, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you, too. Is everybody tired today, maybe? I don't know. You know, don't ever, you know. I remember one Sunday, it was the time change on Easter. That was a tiring day. And, <laughs> but anyway, it is good to... Um, to, uh, to be here. Bulletin has all the announcement in it. I'm going to open with a word of prayer. We're going to go into our first song, uh, which is the kids song, and I think they're all out hiding things right now. And uh, yeah, that's okay. Adults can enjoy it too. Jesus, I want to thank you for performing the greatest rescue mission ever done. And Lord, I thank you for this day and what we get to celebrate. Lord, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and stand up for worship. Did it go? <laughs> hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. You may be seated for a moment. Um, at this time, we're going to take up our morning tithes and offerings. Um, Andrew, why don't you run with that? No one's in here. And uh, people normally do that aren't in the room, so. <laughs> All right. Lord, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift that is about to be received. Please use it to further your kingdom. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's, it's, like, it's like calisthenics. Stand back up for worship. Comforter, my all in all, 
here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on the cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live Oh, I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth
Kiddos, you are released to Kids Church. You may be seated. So, over the last month, five weeks, something like that, these little Jesuses have been showing up all over the building. Last night, they went crazy, and like 50 of them showed up around the building. And which revealed the culprit's hand, which one it was. And so, in honor of their great efforts, we want to officially name Lisa Swisher a the Jesus freak. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> The kids went on a hunt this morning, and um, um, I don't know how many they found, but, uh, 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 but Hallie had 31, and uh, so and I don't know what the other kids had, but, you know, <laughs> so uh, uh, if you ever feel like Jesus is watching you, he is, and uh, so, and, uh, but yeah, I, I, I saw them, and so I went to Lisa this morning, I'm like, I've changed my mind on who I think is the is the culprit. And she's like, "What? <laughs> you did? You left? She left clues, and and I followed them. And <laughs> so, but yes, we officially name you the Jesus freak, and <laughs> wear that name wear that name with honor. And <laughs> oh, it's Resurrection Sunday, guys. Um, good to be here today. It's good to be here with all of you. Um, as in most times at Easter, we tell the story of the resurrection. And, uh, and we're going to do that today, but today we're going to start a few days earlier to when Jesus was on the cross. And, uh, and we'll get to the resurrection. We'll get to the resurrection. So when Jesus went to the cross, and you know, we've all seen the pictures. He was beaten, the crown of thorns, the whip. The, the, we see, all see the pictures. But the greatest problem, the greatest pain that he felt during that day is when he took on the sins of the world and he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because it was the very first time that he was separated from his father. And so it wasn't the beatings, it wasn't the crown of thorns, it wasn't the smacks, it wasn't anything like that. It was, you're my sin that he took upon himself to, that was the greatest anguish that day 
but it was also the greatest victory. Now, when Jesus was on the cross, he made seven statements. Some of them were prayers. Some of them he was talking to people. And some were just statements um, that he made. Um, If I knew I was dying and I had just a handful of things that I had to say, I don't know what the last things were, would be. Um, I think I'd tell my family I love them. I think I would do uh, things like that. But I don't really know fully what the last ones would be. So we're going to look at two of those statements, and then we're going to, jo- then we're going to go on to the resurrection. The first statement, and go ahead and pull it up, Colleen. It's from Luke 22. Sure, sounds good. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And then they divided up his clothes by casting lots. So I want you to put yourself in this situation. Here he is. He's dying on the cross. He's suffering. He's miserable. And he prays this prayer. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I don't know if I'd have been that gracious. You know, I'd have been, smite them, oh great smiter! I would have been like, "Uh uh-uh, man. But he says this statement. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They were doing their jobs. They didn't know they were killing the Son of God. They didn't know things like that. But they said, but he wanted to make sure that that the wrath of God did not fall down upon them for these actions that they were doing. And, and, and so he went and he said, Father, forgive them. Because it was really all about forgiveness. All right, Colleen, can you bring up the next one? Later, knowing that everything now had been finished, and so that scripture may be filled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of his hot plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit, which is John 19, 28-30. And this is a big one. It is finished. It's finished. He didn't say, I'm finished. You know, he didn't say, all right, I'm dead, I'm done, I'm out. He, he said, it is finished. And it was, it's kind of like a, a bill paid in full. You know, isn't it nice? Who here has ever paid off a car? Yeah, isn't that a nice feeling when you pay off that car? You know, or, or you pay off your mortgage or, or whatever. It, 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 the word in Greek is teletestai, and it means paid in full. You see, there was a requirement. The law demanded that in order to cover sin that there had to be a blood sacrifice. That was the law of the land. I know it sounds crazy to us because we live on this side of the cross. We live on this side of where Jesus has already paid that price. So to us, that sounds stupid. It sounds ridiculous. But the law, God's law, was that a blood sacrifice had to be made in in order to pay for the guilty sins. And so he yelled out, it is finished. He's saying that he accomplished his goal. He paid for the sins. He covered it all. The bill was paid in full. Oh, isn't that amazing? Isn't that a blessing when something like that happens? Oh, my goodness. A year ago or two years ago, I think it was a year ago, a year and a half ago, we had a ton of work done on our boilers out here. Both, both, both broke, same time. And uh, we had a ton of work done on our boilers out here. I mean, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of work. And the person who did all the work, the, 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 that, you know, his own business, heating and cooling business, he said, hey, it's paid in full. He covered it all himself. He came in, did the work, covered the parts. It was paid in full. Oh, isn't that awesome? Don't you want somebody to pay off your car? Don't you want somebody to pay off your house? You know? Tell a test I, it was paid in full. 
So what that means is this. We're given a gift. We're given this gift of salvation. All we have to do is accept that gift and follow Jesus. He is not just my Savior. He is my Lord. I follow Jesus. I don't just believe in Jesus, because we can believe in Jesus. Scripture even says the demons believe in Jesus. That's not an issue. I believed in Jesus a really, really long time before I ever started to follow Jesus and, and, and understand his love and salvation and forgiveness of sins. Oh, my goodness. I believed in Jesus for a really, really long time before I actually grasped that I needed to be a Jesus follower, not just a believer in him. So when he said it's finished, it means that we don't have to jump through the hoops. We don't have to go through all the motions, you know. I don't have to earn enough brownie points to make it to heaven. I don't have to, to, to do, if I do, if I do the, the, the ten good deeds and one bad, ooh, I might make it in. No, 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 that's not how it works. It's a gift of salvation and freedom and it's a gift that we have to willingly accept that gift and then the actions we do are based upon love just like you love your kids or you love your spouse or you love your siblings and that compels you to do things it's a very similar relationship with Jesus but now let's jump over to resurrection Sunday Matthew 28 if you got a Bible, go ahead and turn there. If not, it's going to just be up on the screen. Now, all of the gospel stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, have a version of this. There's different details in different parts of it that, that, that have there. It, it, certain, it's an emphasis on life. Of, of If you ever have listened to an eyewitness report, you know that two people can look at the same thing but catch different points of it because it's what stuck out in their mind. And the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, 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 Matthew and John were physically there. They, they were disciples of Jesus. Mark was an account, uh, mostly that came from Peter, he was, that, that Mark wrote it down for him, who walked with Jesus, Peter did. And then, then Luke was researched. He interviewed dozens and dozens of people and he researched everything to write the book of Luke. And, and he, incidentally, he also wrote the book of Acts. But that is 110% research, which incidentally proves that is true. Matthew 28, just the first six verses. Actually, I'm going to read all the way to verse 10, but we'll focus on the first six. After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary, there was a lot of girls named Mary in the New Testament, but this one isn't the mother of Jesus. It's, it's probably the, 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 the mother of uh, James and John. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and its clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. You know how often God says do not be afraid? Sometimes we should probably get that. I don't know. You know, it, it might be important. It, do not be afraid. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So when the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples, suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Again. Go and tell my brothers to go into Galilee where they will see me. Lord, I want to just thank you for your word. I ask that you will speak to our hearts. In the flesh, I bring nothing of value to this morning. But Lord, I ask that your spirit will speak in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we are. The, the, the ladies are going. And, and to understand the custom here, 
the guards were there, the big rock was there, because there was rumors that the disciples were going to steal the body. So they, they wanted to make sure that, that, that he stayed in the grave. They wanted to make sure he was stuck in there. And so the ladies were going, and they were going to put some perfumes on his body. It was just a customary thing. And, and they had no idea how the stone was going to get out of the way. Um, but the stone was rolled away. They came there, felt the earthquake. Stone was rolled away, saw the angel. Now, in another account of this, they saw the angel inside of the tomb. Like I said, it was eyewitness accounts and how it was researched. But they saw the angel, and he said, he's not here. He is not here. And, and, and so then they're, 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 they're going, they're checking this out. I understand them being a little freaked out over this. I would be a little freaked out over this too. The guards are like dead men. I understand that too. And, and here they are, and the women are seeing this for the very first time. They have no idea what's happening. They were just there. They were, they were defeated. They were down. They were, our Lord has been killed. They were just defeated. And then suddenly this changes everything. So from our perspective, this is Sunday morning. This would be Sunday morning from our perspective. And, and, and that's why there's church on Sunday, Sunday morning. We call it Resurrection Sunday. And, and they go and it all changes. And so the angel is talking to them. And the first thing he tells to them is to come. Come. How often in life do we want to keep Jesus at a distance? You know, the cross was great. Even if we accept everything about the cross and we're grateful, our sins have been paid for, and great. But we just want to keep him at a distance. It's kind of like the crucifix as opposed to the cross. And if you own a crucifix in your house, I'm not, you know, fine, keep your crucifix. I'm not dissing it. But to me, the Savior's not on the cross anymore. He left it. He was taken down. So here he is, and the angel says to the ladies, come. And i got to ask you a question. Have you ever come to Jesus? Have you ever come to Jesus? You know, it's not a question, do I attend church? Do I listen to the to Christian radio? Do I, I, I have Christian friends? Were my parents Christian? Were my grandparents Christian? I'm not asking any of those questions. I'm asking, have you ever come to Jesus? Or do you like, yeah, I'm a fan of Jesus, but not a follower of Jesus. You know, I could be fans of certain things, I could like the Chicago Bears. I could be a fan of the Chicago Bears. But I'm not going to be out there on the field with them. I, 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 I could be a fan of, of, of whatever, fill in the blank. But if I'm really part of it, I'm not playing the game with them. I, I, I'm not right there telling them which plays to do. Because I'm just a fan. And sometimes we don't come to Jesus because we like to keep Jesus over there and we want to be over here. Yeah, I'll show up for church. Yeah, I'll sometimes read my Bible. Yeah, I'll have nine Bibles in my house. Don't know where any of them are, but I have nine Bibles in my house. I really like that one Christian song I listen to. But do we come to Jesus? And the second thing that the angel said to the ladies was this. He said, see. Do you ever actually see? We look. We look all the time, right? I mean, I, 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 I can look at each and every one of you, right? You know, but, but I don't know your eye color because I'm not seeing you. And I'm blind in one eye, so you know, I can't really see that good anyway. But... Do we actually see things? Heard a story. Um, 
This, uh, this lady, she's a, she, she runs A21, which is an anti-trafficking organization. Her name is Christine Kane. And a beautiful story of how God worked in her life. But I heard her tell this story one day. And uh, she was in, she was somewhere in Greece. I don't remember exactly where. And she saw posters of missing kids. We've all seen posters of missing kids, right? But one of those little girls was the same age and the same name of her own daughter. And so for the very first time, she saw those kids. And that's what God used to birth the mission to the anti-human trafficking organization, which is probably one of the biggest ones in the world now. Because she saw them. When you intently look at something, you notice that they're having a bad day. You're noticed what's going on in their life. You notice things. And so when the angel said, come and see, he wasn't saying, peekaboo, no. He was saying, look, this is where he was laying. This is where he, 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 he was at. He is not here. He has risen. See, this is where it was, but it's all changed. Come and see. And Jesus said, come and see all the time. You know, there's another saying, there's wait and see. I really hate the statement, wait and see. It just bugs me, wait and see. And I even found myself using it sometimes, which bugs me even more. And, but come and see is an anticipation of what is happening in life. If we don't know what's going to happen, if we don't know how it's going to turn out, we'll say, wait and see. Oh, let's just wait and see how that happens. But when we say, come and see, it's a knowledge that something is happening or something is going to happen. So the greatest message about Jesus, you cannot believe in Jesus at all. You could think that, that, that all, the, all those churchgoers are kooky and, and psycho and whatever else you want to believe. But Jesus, is somebody that you can come and see. Come and see. It makes a difference if you come and see. So the next thing the angel told them is go. Go. Come, see, go. Go and tell my disciples. Go. Because you know what? The empty tomb is awesome. The empty tomb is amazing. He was once dead, is now alive. Forgiveness of sins, conquer death. Yes! Awesome! <sighs> but we're not just supposed to sit there and stare at the empty tomb. We're grateful for the empty tomb. We're grateful for what Jesus has done. Well, we don't just stand there sitting and saying, wow, isn't that nice? Let's, let's plant flowers here and, 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 and let's sit here and let's do this and let's do that. No. Jesus said go because he did all this not just so we can make it to heaven. Yes, heaven is the reward. But the goal let me rephrase that. Heaven is the gift. But the goal is to walk with Jesus every single day of our life. Come. See. Go. Go tell the disciples. Go do this. Go do that. Come. See. Go. And then the last thing that he said to them was simply this. Tell my disciples. Come to Jesus. See what he has done. Go out on the mission that he's given you. And I got to tell you, every single one of us has, has an on-purpose creation of Almighty God and have a mission from Almighty God. And then tell. And I got to tell you this morning, that's why I'm here. I got to tell you 
about my Jesus. I got to tell you that he's not dead. I got to tell you that I personally have been forgiven by him. I'm not deserving. I can't earn it. I'm not worthy. But I have been forgiven by him. And although that this physical body will decay one day, we are all made for eternity. If you are a believer in Christ, I'm planning on seeing you in 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 400 years, 10,000 years. It doesn't matter because we are made for eternity. It just depends upon where we're going to spend it. So these physical bodies die. But they're temporary. Come, Jesus. See what he's done. Go and live the life that he has for you. And sing his praises by telling everybody what he has done for you. What he's done it for you. It's corny little sayings like Jesus had a refrigerator, your pitcher would be on it, and things like that. And 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 and, and when he died on the cross, you were on his mind and and all those things. But I want you to realize that Jesus is above time and space. And he knows you through and through. The scripture says that you were knit together in your mother's womb by him. And he knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows the number of days. He knows all of these things about you. And we were made to be in relationship with him. So this morning, this Resurrection Sunday morning, I just want you to know that the message to the very first witnesses of the resurrection was come to Jesus See what he's done. Go and serve the mission that he has for you. And tell everybody of the glories of God. I'm grateful for what Jesus has done. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And I encourage you to come, see, go, and tell and see what Jesus does. Lord, I want to thank you for who you are. I thank you for your great love and all that you do. Lord, I ask that you will just be with us. Draw us unto yourself. Let us come to you, not just for salvation, but for strength and peace and love and joy. And Lord, may we, may we see, may we see people as you see them. May we see the glory that you've done. May we see the victory that you've given. May we see all, all of that, Lord. May we go and not just sit in a, in a holy huddle and, and, and not know what, what comes next, Lord, but go and live out the lives that you have made us for. And may we tell of your praises and your glory to all the world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.